Hello everyone, now then, welcome back to another episode of my YouTube channel. Uh, you're joining me actually in the lovely uh, park that is Richmond Park. Look at the trees behind me, autumnal leaves looking very beautiful indeed. Uh, but I'm up to something today, I'm not just here kicking leaves. Many of you will see me walking around booting leaves on my uh, Instagram and socials. Mainly just for the pleasure actually, and just to allow for some steam. I am up to something today, uh, and what I'm going to be doing is marching over to my favourite uh, tree and bench in Richmond Park. I actually used to spend a lot of time over here throughout lockdown. Obviously, uh, lockdown round one was a very stressful time uh, between doing A&E and all those things, media commitments. I used to actually go out here and do a lot of my radio interviews walking around this tree because actually it was one of the only times I managed to get out and waffling rather a lot. Let's get on to the main content of the video. Kind of on trend and on topic for today, it's all about air quality and the air that we breathe. And this video is brought to you in sponsorship, in partnership, in teamwork with Dyson. I've been working with them to do this air quality improvement project or air quality project um, where we've been looking into the quality of the air that we breathe during lockdown and post lockdown, which I think is very interesting. So I was going to use my favourite bench um, to hopefully film this, but then I got here and realised that physics is in my favour. I need to put the camera somewhere and I need the bench to be obviously a bit higher. So I tried to use a stick, try to lean it. I've given up on all that. So rather than that, we're going to go and find a bin somewhere. But I did actually, a fun fact, I did spend a lot of time here. A lot of you will know, if you know Richmond Park here, you know that East Sheen Gate's over there and it's a lovely little spot because it looks down over the whole of uh, Richmond. I say the whole of Richmond. It looks over a large part of Richmond Park, which is lovely. So let's go and find somewhere else. There's probably going to be a bin now. I'll find a bin that we can put you guys on and we can explain what I've been doing with this bag. Look, a little teaser. This is the bag I've been using, air quality. Come on, let's go. Right guys, I've got you nestled nicely on actually a branch. Uh, it's an upgrade from a bin. You guys deserve more than being on a bin here on this uh, YouTube channel. Guys, sorry for the waffle. I'm honestly really excited to make this video uh, because I'm a bit of a geek and it's very interesting. How does this all happen and why am I working with Dyson? So, Dyson approached me at the start of lockdown saying, we have a window here, as awful as everything is, we have a window here um, opportunity is not the right word, but you get what I mean, where we can actually look at uh, air quality because we're in a situation that's unprecedented. Around the world, major cities are closed. People aren't out and about. They're not driving the cars. Um, they're staying inside. And we have an opportunity to compare and look at the impact of pollution and you know vehicles, I guess, other modes of transport and general uh, activity and human activity on our environments, particularly in our major cities. And I thought, wow, this is a really interesting idea. It's really, really uh, an exciting prospect. You know, as a doctor, I understand how important air quality is for our health. I mean, it's pretty widely accepted that poor air quality has an impact on our lungs, on chronic respiratory conditions, and our overall health and well-being. So good air is good. I know myself as someone that cycles in London, you know, it doesn't take a genius to realise that when the traffic is bad and you're behind buses that are diesels or whatever, that the air quality is poor. You're breathing in this stuff, sometimes you even feel it in the back of your throat, it's horrible. And when I'm cycling in beautiful locations like Richmond or other parts of the UK, the air quality is much better and you feel better for it. So I was like, yeah, that's fine, but how are we going to measure this in an objective sense? There's more than Alex just going like this or saying that his throat's full of smog. Luckily, Dyson had already a good plan of action about how they would do this. What they did is recruited 14 major cities around the world, which include New York, Milan, Kuala Lumpur, uh, London, uh, what else did they do? Seoul, loads of major cities, which I'll list on there as well. I can't remember off the top of my head. And they looked at, right, let's assess the air quality in these areas and let's do it in three ways. Number one is local air quality data from those cities. That's very handy, it monitors obviously uh, what is in the air, you know, how much nitrogen oxide levels, there are volatile organic compounds as well as um, particulate matters. And ultimately those are indicators if they're high of poor air quality and, you know, in a worse environment essentially in terms of air. Secondly, Dyson handed out a load of these backpacks uh, to people like me who uh, essentially would wear them, uh, go around and collect data. And the way that these backpacks actually work, the little air intake here, and it's got a device within it. So it sucks air in, the device measures what's in the air, uh, and also within the device is a GPS. So the GPS actually tracks where you are when it's breathing that air. Pretty clever. And it also has a big battery in it as well to make sure it lasts a while. So basically, it otherwise looks like a normal bag. It's just got zips in it and everything, and I used it um, going to and from a and &E. I used it to cycle and usually out and about. So very handy at collecting data. The third and final way we collected data was through the Dyson Air Purifier, which essentially sucks in air and analyzes what's in it. So three good methods. Within the home, broad data from, you know, city-wide, and also individuals like me, 
running around with a backpack on. So what we did is we used these three methods to analyze air quality during lockdown and post lockdown. So what it meant for me is I went to and from work with my backpack on, uh, switched it on on the way, switched on the way back, collected data, and also whenever I went cycling, I chucked the backpack on. And I did this for a few weeks. I remember one day during lockdown, this is when you're allowed to go out and have a cycle and do some exercise. I went, um, I went down the street and I just stopped and I thought, this is, this is so weird. I am the only person on this street and I'll try and find that picture to put in. If I can't find it, I'm very sorry, but there was the only person on that street. It's absolutely unheard of. And I thought, wow, this is, this is just incredible. And so I had my backpack on then. I don't know if any of you have seen pictures of Delhi or been to Delhi where there's so much smog. And there's a really great picture actually that was shown during the lockdown of Delhi pre with all this smog above it. And you can't see the sky, you can't see the blue sky. Then all of a sudden, a couple of weeks into lockdown, blue skies. And the people of Delhi said, you know, they couldn't believe it really because they hadn't seen smog lift like this in such a long time. So really what you're expecting, I think, is to see much better uh, air pollution levels, but it might surprise you the results. So global findings with the nitrogen oxides levels were significantly higher post lockdown than in lockdown. That makes sense. Um, nitrogen oxides, uh, your uh, particulate matters and your VOCs combustion, transport, cars, pollution. So you'd expect them to be higher uh, post lockdown. So that makes sense. It was quite significantly higher across the world. Okay, you see some of the graphs on the screen. One of the findings that surprised me, and I don't know, you guys might say otherwise, but I thought it was quite interesting. Particulate matters were higher in lockdown than post lockdown. And if you stop and think about it, I guess it makes sense. We were spending a lot of time indoors we were you know, dusting, cleaning, creating dust, moving particles, which kicks it up and that, that, that affects the reading. We also were cooking and basically doing an internal combustion indoors. So anything that involves cooking or heating can increase uh, the level of particulate matters. Let's talk about London now. London findings that there's a 41% increase in nitrogen oxides levels post lockdown and then in lockdown. That makes sense. That's in keeping what we found globally. So for those in London, the backpack data showed that the particulate matters levels rose by 9%, which is quite interesting uh, and I guess makes sense. There's more congestion, uh, you know, if there's more traffic, pollution, etc., then you'd expect that to be picked up by the backpack. What did surprise me though is the nitrogen oxides levels fell. They actually decreased. And to me, I was expecting them to be in keeping with the global findings, i.e. that with more pollution around, they'd be worse. At first I had to think like, why is that? But then if you look at my individual backpack reading, which is even more interesting, my particulate matters level fell by 39% and 42% for nitrogen oxides. So you might think, well, hang on, you'd expect those to go up. Why have they gone down? And I had to kind of sit and think, and I spoke to the Dyson team about this, and you know, what can we take from this? How does that make sense? Human behavior, I think, is a big part of it. So if you think about the story I was saying, when um, traffic wasn't bad at all, I was out in Oxford Street, cycling down Oxford Street, it was empty. But as soon as the traffic gets bad, you see a lot of cars around, you naturally avoid that. So I think, well, actually, I did a lot of cycling around Hyde Park, particularly um, post lockdown, because the traffic was worth green, worse. Green spaces are obviously cleaner areas. I spent a lot of time here in, in Richmond Park, and I probably, without even realizing, avoided areas of congestion and pollution. It's just a natural human thing to do. Ideally, I probably should have made sure I did exactly the same route. If you think about it, I think there's something really interesting to take from those findings, in the sense that the decisions you make and the way that you live your life and whether you walk to work, whether you cycle, and whether you avoid congested areas, whether you spend time in green spaces, those really do actually have an impact on the air that you're breathing. It's not just the overall of the city, it's how you behave in that city that does actually make a difference. And that would make sense if you compared overall air quality to my findings with my backpack. If you avoid those kind of congested areas, you find methods of transport there, hopefully not exposing you to poor air quality, you spend time in green, spa green spaces, you're probably gonna find a benefit from it. I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts around that. You know, what do you think about it? You know, I'm not an air, I'm not a data analyst, I'm not an air quality expert, I'm a junior doctor, and I'm just taking, you know, my conclusions from what I've seen. Uh, very, very interesting project to be involved with. I'm actually very grateful that Dyson asked me to do it. Very, very cool, if nothing else, to walk around with some kind of high-tech gadget bag uh, and just, you know, act like I'm a scientist for, for a few weeks. Very nice indeed. But let me know your thoughts. A big thanks to Dyson. And for me, I think, as always, we can all make choices each day that can improve, hopefully, our health and, and, and our overall happiness. And good, clean air environment, nice environment, 
definitely helps. Thanks everyone, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and um, please do share the content, it really helps. You know, I enjoy making this content and I want people to see it. I'm proud of the content I make. I'm learning, I'm hopefully getting better as time goes on as well. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Take care, stay safe, and goodbye.